everybody, welcome back. Joe Jaguar here again, and I got this guy, which is going to be the last one I do for the Christmas uh, telescope shopping. So, as you see, it's the Skywatcher Heritage, which is a mini dog, 5.1 inch. So, I was actually, I just opened it up, uh, just because um, usually you always got to put, um, you know, the, the base together. So, as you guys uh, probably may or may not know, uh, it's, it's like a, the dog bases are basically MDF or particle board, so I thought for sure, instead of wasting all your time, um, you know, putting that base together, which could have taken me half an hour or so, I uh, figured I'll open it up, and then to my surprise, uh, the base is already set up, so that's kind of neat there. So let me just show you first. I've never used this before, so give me a second to kind of get things settled here. Okay, stick rid of that. And let me tighten back in right now. I should take this guy out. There we go. Okay. So, like I said, I was pretty, pretty uh, surprised to see that this base was already uh, put together. So basically, it's it's a Dobsonian base, basically a miniature one. Um, it feels okay. Little feet there. Um, hmm. Okay, and of course, you can, with this Vixen type of style uh, type uh, rail here, you can put like any um, any telescope, refractor, reflector, mini dog that has a Vixen type of rail. So that's kind of neat. Let me just take a quick peek. Okay, so obviously, you guys probably seen this before, so there's the Vixen rail, so I guess, again, any scope that has a Vixen rail then will fit on this little mini dog, and here's a carrying handle, so that's kind of neat. Um, yeah, okay, so this is a 130 millimeter, which is basically a 5.1 inch uh, reflector, it is a parabolic mirror. Uh, so that's good. You always want a parabolic mirror if you can get it because it's just better quality. Uh, I guess what's neat about this, it's it, this is supposed to be an F5. So if I expand it, that should be an F5 reflector. And of course, it uh, looks pretty good. And it has a, uh, you probably can't see it, like a silver dot right in the inside the, the middle of the mirror. That way if you collimate or for the people that don't know what that means, align the mirrors, you already got a dot to put it on if you have a laser type of thing. So that's the one good thing about this guy. So when you collapse it, it's about the size of a focal ratio of 2.5. When you expand it, obviously goes to five. So that's pretty neat. So let me put it on this guy. that okay I guess obviously you can slide it uh, you know, on the rail if you want it closer to the bottom a little higher type of thing I'll just put it midway for now so obviously um, you gotta find this the center balance too so um, obviously you're gonna need a stool for this a little table something like that or it is you know obviously not gonna work uh, unless you're going to want to be on the ground. So again, uh, okay, so I think what you have to do here, you see it now it's kind of top heavy, so then you've got to bring um, this a little, little further down. So I guess you got to trial and error. Okay, so now it's too bottom heavy, so obviously now i got to do that and put the tension a little bit and then there you go. Actually, uh, too tight. So anyway, um, what do I think about it? I think it's not bad, being that this guy, again, it's very portable. It's a 5 inch, 5.1 inch actually, uh, in the size of a 2.5 inch, which is really great. Uh, you got a little carrying handle here. So if you want something in this size, this bracket, um, that's portable this might be okay here's the only, there's two issues that I see here obviously when it's obviously up not, not down um, and I 
I've seen people mention this before, that you're gonna, you might have stray light that might enter the, you know, the tube. So you're gonna need some type of a shield. Um, you know, with the bigger Dobsonians, you, you could buy the fabric that uh, covers that, so you don't get stray light. Now, here's something I have not seen anybody anywhere talk about: is that I'm pretty sure that this secondary mirror right here is gonna do up. Now, especially in the summer when it's hot and humid, I guarantee that guy is going to do up unless you live somewhere like in the desert, like Arizona or Texas or anything like that. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, it's gonna do up, so you gotta think of that too. So not only do you need uh, some type of shield here to stop stray lights, you probably need something that's gonna extend another foot out. Uh, so I, I guess a dew cap, to go further or it's going to uh, do and then that's it game over for you so I have not heard anybody do that uh, or say that in a video but just because it's an open tube I know that's going to be a problem um, so those are the two things to look out for now as far as value I kind of like it that it collapses in such a small format which is great um, but you know as far as value I'm not a hundred percent sure just because like for instance Mead sells the Polaris which is the the 130 millimeter which is the exact same size 5.1 inch it's a solid tube now of course that one is f5 parabolic mirror but it's a solid tube so which means it's that size um, and it's 299 a Canadian before tax this guy's 279 um, and right now it's actually on sale, so they're actually the same price. Both of these are 279. The Mead Polaris, I mean EQ2, and this guy is 279 Canadian before tax. So really, it's the same price. Uh, again, what I like about this, it's it can fold down into a really portable where the other one can't. But now you have the two issues of you need a dew shield or a dew shield here and a dew cap out there, otherwise you're going to do up. The other thing is you're going to need a stool or a table, so that, you know, is another cost I think you have to consider. Um, and then the only other thing, too, I'm, I thought about is, okay, being that these, you know, this is kind of like your Lazy Susan type of thing. This is particle wood or MDF. It's the same type of press board anyway. This is, it's not plywood, so obviously it's going to weather worse than plywood. And it's the most cheapest type of wood there is. You know, it's just laminate over um, uh, dense board, and that that's it. So this is very cheap uh, kind of base to make. Um, so I think it should actually be cheaper. This guy, instead of 279, it should be 239, 249 max. Just because, like I said, the Mead Polaris 130 with an EQ2, which means it comes with a tripod um, and saying that even that guy on the lowest setting is going to be a perfect height for any teenager to adult um, an EQ2 is, is fine for a 5.1 inch uh, reflector um, it has manual manual slow motion controls you can put a drive on it later on but even if you don't put a drive on it you can just point it north and um, you, you only have to slew, uh, you know, on one axis. Now, remember, when you're at high power, moving this guy, as you can see, like, I'm moving it an inch at a time, but in the eyepiece, if I'm at 200 power, that's going to be moving, that's like 200 inches, type of thing. So, it's, when, that's the one thing about Dobbs that you have to uh, consider, that when you try to move these left and right, up and down, sometimes there's either too much friction or too little friction that it moves too much so moving it in minute movements like slow motion controls can when you just move a millimeter at a time is definitely harder so i would say you probably in any dog big or small you're not going to be pushing it you know very high like the 250 300 400 power well not that this guy could do 400 but being uh, 130 should easily do maximum 260 power. 
I don't even think I would take this guy over 175 because again, you're going to be bumping it all the time. Um, and uh, I, the movements are not accurate enough to move, like I said, in micro millimeter movements. So uh, because of that, I think it's actually better to have an EQ2 uh, with slow motion controls, and I, I think it costs more. An EQ2 that drives the motors, the cog wheels, and all that, probably a cast iron, aluminum tripod, it definitely costs more to make than this type of base. So I think there should be a price difference between this guy and a, uh, you know, one in an EQ2. So if Mead has, again, a 130 millimeter on an EQ2, because both scopes are the same. 5 inch, parabolic, you both have 5, the eyepieces that come with it is um, the super uh, wide, which are, they're fine for this uh, price point telescope. There are 3 elements, you know, again, later on, maybe upgrade to Palazzo's, Super Palazzo's is more than fine, but these are okay to get started. Uh, again, 3 element, about 50 degree field of view, and it comes with a red dot finder. Now, I know this red dot finder the view port is actually, or the view window is kind of small. So that I don't like so much. There are other red dot finders that have a bigger view port. Um, but besides that, it is fine. Again, so I think the value is okay, but it's, it's not great. Maybe you got to pay more to have a collapsible type of telescope, maybe. But I just think uh, overall it's okay. But again, at high power, it's, you know, just you can't do micro millimeter movements on, on both axes because these are not that smooth. So I think as far as value, this should be a little cheaper. Again, 239 to 249 Canadian, uh, where then the next step up would be this on an EQ2 at 299. To me, makes sense. There should be a difference. I think the EQ2 again. It, it's most people can use EQ2s. They're not that hard. You can polar align. And you're only tracking on one axis, and you got the slow motion controls that you can manually minute move. Uh, but besides that, this guy's pretty good for the price. It should have just been a tad cheaper, I think, for what it is. But overall, again, I have not seen anybody worry about doing up of the secondary mirror. But I bet you it's going to be an issue. Just maybe no one's really thought of it. Uh, I guess so that's a couple things, uh, three things I got to buy, uh, fabric here and um, extend the cap and um, there we go and maybe a table or some sort to view. Okay guys, I hope you guys uh, like this video. Now as you guys know, I've done five videos this week starting with the filter one, then two of the Bars Barsica ones, then the uh, Celestron 70 millimeter refractor and now this guy. So um, I'm probably going to take two to three weeks off as far as making videos. I'll probably come back after the new year. Uh, but you guys have, uh, like I said, I've done five videos for you guys. So this is obviously, uh, if you can get into this uh, price point, uh, this is, I think is a, a good scope. It compacts very nicely. Uh, I, again, the only issue I have is that you need a, uh, two things, a, a, sh a dew shield and a, a fabric to to do that and maybe a t you know a table a stool that type of thing maybe from ikea but uh, obviously it's going to bump up the price and again like i said i think the price should have been a little bit lower on this guy i think that this base is so cheap to manufacture um it's not even real wood anyway but uh, besides that i'll see you guys in about three weeks i hope you guys like the five videos i did for you for the christmas shopping spree and uh, cheers